Friends, everyone's having a good day. Welcome to Man of Monday. Uh, I'm actually looking for what I was going to talk about, but uh, the good news is I can talk about it with it or without it, so uh, it's not going to be canceled or anything like that. I pray that everyone's having a good day. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get on Facebook and like this and share it. All right, well, let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to, to come together, to share your gospel, Lord, and just to, to, to bask in your holy word, Lord. Lord, you have given us instructions to live. You have given us instructions to prosper. You have given us instructions to, to, to continue to move forward and to combat the things of this world, Lord. Lord, I pray that we pay attention to the to the directions that you've given us, Lord. I, pay, I pray that we pay attention to the, the way that you have told us to love. I, I pray that you, you, you continue to guide us, Lord, and that we continue to follow, Lord. Let us be obedient servants and allow us to, to enjoy the riches that you have for us, Lord. Let us understand that, uh, that all things come with a price, Lord. And Lord, sometimes the price of following you is, is, is ridding our lives of the things that uh, we don't need even though we may think that we need them, even though we may be holding on to them for our own selfish purposes, Lord, may we realize that we need to release these things and that we may need to, to walk away from certain people, certain places, and certain things, Lord, so that we can prosper, Lord. It is your desire to see us prosper. It is your desire to see us thrive. It's your desire to see us become the creation that you want us to be, Lord. Allow us to be that creation. Allow us to glorify you. Allow us to, to be justified in your glory, Lord, and allow us to appreciate the gifts that have been given to us since the beginning of time. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put all of this stuff up real quick, and I'm going to grab my hard copy of the Bible. We are going to be in Genesis chapter 1. As most of y'all know, that's one of my favorites, so uh, I am looking forward to talking about this. So I know that most of y'all that have uh, that have been a, a part of our church, most of y'all that have been a part of uh, part of our ministry, y'all have uh, y'all have heard me talk about Genesis chapters one, two, and three. I am a, a firm sure. believer that uh, if we have the proper understanding of Genesis chapter one, two, and three, that our lives are a lot easier. I, I, it is not an accident that the the, under the inspiration of God, those are the first pages of our Bible. Um, it is not by accident that, uh, that God reveals so much in the beginning of his Holy Scripture because he wants us to know who he is. He wants us to know who we are. He wants us to know exactly what we are supposed to be doing, and he wants us to know the, the, the intrinsic value that he has placed on our lives from the very start, uh, the reason that I decided to preach on this is because there has been just a lot of a lot of negativity, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of uh, depression, a lot of anxiety, a lot of uh, a lot of I don't know, a lot of bad spirit just around a lot of people that I've spoken with recently, and. Um, as I said the other day, sometimes we just have to get back down to the basics. And when we get down to the basics, we get to see the glory of God and we get to see the, uh, the joy that we should have in our lives. And uh, as I said, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 1. And uh, we're going to start with verse 26. It says, And then God said, Let us 
make man in our image. For after our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And so it was. And God, God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. So there's a lot of things that are going on there, a lot of things that we need to see. A lot of things that we just need to, to get out into the open. Um, the first thing that I want to see is that God says, let us make man in our image. This is the uh, first acknowledgement of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, otherwise, it would read, I'm going to make man in my image. So we see that uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit is present in the very, very first chapter of Scripture, we see Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We see that the Holy Trinity is in place. Now, when he says, let us make man in our image, it is not in the image as far as what God looks like. You see, so many times we place image on just a physical likeness. Um, in this instance, it is quite the opposite. Um, God has given us the tangible aspects of himself so that we could be bearers of his image to all of those that we come in contact with. God has given us the ability to think. God has given us the ability to reason. God has given us the ability to, to have a will. God has given us the ability to have a, a, a moral compass and an ethical um, carrying out of that moral compass. But the one thing that he did not give us is he did not give us deity. And he did not give us his omni traits. Um, he's given us the ability to do the things that he does as far as all of the things that I just said. He's also given us the ability to love. He has given us the ability to, uh, to, to, to be benevolent. He has given us the ability to, to do all of these things, but we cannot do it to the, to the point that he can do it. Um, but through those things, we are to, to be image bearers. So God created us, one, so that we could bear his image. It is so important that we remember that on a daily basis. I, I can't stress enough how important that is. You know, we do deal with a lot of things on a daily basis, and it is easy to get frustrated. It is easy to get angry. It is easy to get anxious. It's easy to get depressed. It's easy to do all of those things. You see, but all of those things separate us from God. If we are able to wake up in the morning, despite circumstance, because you know what? Circumstance happens. Circumstance is earthly. Circumstance is, is, is oftentimes consequence of the things that we have done. So situations are situations, but what we need to remember and what we need to remind ourselves each and every day is that God created us in his image. God wants us to bear that image of him, and if we allow these other things to interfere, we are not being image bearers of him. We are actually being image bearers of the problems of the world. It's funny to, to, to walk by and to to, to actually receive some conversations and to, to see what people talk about. 
you know, more often than not, people want to pour their problems out as opposed to, as opposed to pouring out the glory of God. If we were to look in the mirror every single day, and I'm not trying to pull a Stuart smiley, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Um, no, but if we do look at ourselves, and we say, you know what, I am made in the image of God, and what does God say about his creation? He says it was very good. So despite the circumstance, despite your your, your financial hardship, despite the 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 sick person in your family, despite the, 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 the bad things that may be happening in your life, God loved you enough to make you in his own image. And why did he make you in his own image? Because he knew that his image was good. Therefore, if we cling to the things that are good, if we cling to the things that are of God, we will be able to live that life that we want to live. We will be able to live that life that... Uh, that, that we desire, and we will be able to be pleasing to God. Now, the second thing that I want us to see is I want us to see that God has given us dominion. And what does that mean? That means that God has made us stewards over his creation. We have been given stewardship of all the things on this earth. So that means that the, the earth itself, the, the actual dirt, the actual grass, the actual trees, the actual... Um, the actual uh, waterways, all of those things we have been given stewardship over. We've also been given dominion or stewardship over the animals, which is um, any animal that you can think of. Also dominion over the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. We have been given dominion over all these things. Therefore, we are supposed to take care of them like they were ours. This is a place where we have fallen short. Over and over and over and over again. Um, I've, I've, I've spoken often about it, but if we were the stewards that God wanted us to be, even though, you know, in, in two chapters we're going to see the fall of man, we're going to see man fall away from God, we're going to see the introduction of sin, we're going to see that all of these things... All of these things are still prevalent in our lives, but now that we've introduced sin, we have a counterpart to the things that are of God. We have the things that are of God, and we have the things that are of man, which are, which are sinful. And, uh, but if we were good stewards of the gifts God, God had given us as far as his creation, we would not have starvation. We would not have poverty. We would not have homelessness. We would not have many of the problems that we had if we just took care of the things that God has given us. There is no way that any of us can logically believe that if we were the stewards that we were supposed to be, that we would not have plenty to care for each and every person on this earth. But, but we have decided to spring up cities. We have decided to deplenish uh, uh, um, resources. We have decided to take from the earth as opposed to tend to the earth the way that, that God has intended and the way that God has called us to do. So that's something that we need to be mindful of, again, each and every day. So if we're making a list of things that we need to do, number one is we need to look in the mirror and we need to see ourselves as being created in God's image. We need to see that, that we are resembling God in, uh, in, in, in that tangible nature. The next thing that we need to see is we need to see that we are to be stewards. We are to be caretakers of, of the gifts that we have been given. No matter what those gifts may be, we should be the stewards that we have been called to be. Now, we all fall short on that. I know. I, I fall short on that. I know that, uh, I know that every single one of us falls short on that. But that's why these conscious reminders are so important. The next thing that I want to see is actually tied to that very thing. And that is that, that God established a relationship with man different from any relationship that he had with any other part of his creation. God did not establish the same relationship that he has with man that he has with the plants. God did not establish the same relationship with, with man that he has with the animals. He did not establish the same relationship that, that he has with the fish. He did not establish the same uh, relationship that he did with the, the earth itself. The relationship that God has with man is unique. It's a, it's a relationship of, of, of fellowship. 
It's a relationship of, of, of servitude. It's a relationship of gratitude. It's a relationship of obedience. And it's a relationship of, uh, of, of, of sacrifice, um, knowing that there is a, a, a better outcome, a better end to the place that we are right now. So, you know, through the, 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 the relationship with God, we are able to see how he has laid his creation out. We are able to see our purposes, and we are able to see exactly what it is that he wants us to do. Now, the other thing that he wants us to do is he wants us to fellowship with man. He wants us to fellowship with each other. Now, in, in, in the verse, uh, in verse 28, he, uh, he is talking about man and woman, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Now, the reason that, that God created woman is because he realized that Adam should not be alone. It was not good for Adam to be alone. And oftentimes we brag about being a loner. We brag about, uh, you know, being to ourselves. We brag about being different, about being separate from the crowd. And um, that's all well and good. You can brag all you want to about that. You can, you can promote your isolation. But the truth of the matter is God designed us to not be isolated. God designed us to be there for each other. God designed us for fellowship with each other. And God designed us so that we could lift each other up so that we could be there to support each other. Uh, the th what he calls Eve is he calls Eve a helpmate. So we are here to help each other. We are here to lift each other up. We are here to build each other up in times of, of trouble. We are here to, to rejoice with each other in, in times of, of, of rejoicing. We are here to, to, to help each other through each and everything. And, and that is not up to one individual. That is not up to, to, to one congregation. That is up to all of us. If we are going to be called people of God, we have to understand that we have a responsibility to not isolate ourselves. Not only to share the things that, are, that, that we need help with, but uh, to also be there so that we can be of assistance to those that are in need. So we see these principles laid out and we see these principles playing out. And uh, it brings us to a, a, a place where we can make a, a good, tidy conclusion about what man is. Man is an ethical creature created by God that has the ability to do right and also has the ability to do wrong. However, through discipline and obedience, man has been given the opportunity to be good stewards over the gifts that he has received and to build upon those gifts through their faith in God, to establish relationships with each other that are that are that are that are truly beneficial to each other. Also, man has been given the opportunity to build a relationship with God that becomes the foundation of our lives that will not be shaken. Now, I say that because the world wants to shake you. The world wants to see you sway one way or the other. But you see, once we have that solid foundation in God, remember that I said through discipline and through obedience. The only way that one can be obedient is by having actual rules, actual, an actual code of living, which God has given to each of us. And if we abide by that and we abide by him, we will find the happiness, we will find the peace, we will find the security that we are searching for. But without him, that is an impossibility. So each and every day that we get up and we, we feel like we're depressed, we feel like that we're, it's just not worth it, we feel like that, that God has abandoned us, we feel like that man has abandoned us, we feel like we are all alone and we feel like that we just need to sit there and wallow in our pity. We need to fight against that and we need to do just the opposite. We need to, number one, reach out to God. We need to be with God through scripture. We need to be God with God through prayer. We need to be with God in that time when we feel all of those feelings. The second thing that we need to do 
is we need to reach out to our fellow man. So we need to have relationship with God, and then we need to have relationship with our fellow man. We need to we need to make sure that we are letting other people know exactly what it is that's ailing us. And, and there's a way to do it properly, and there's a way to to do it improperly. And um, you know, the the way to do it properly is to to seek guidance, to seek advice, to seek wisdom, to to seek knowledge, and to to ask for help, and to to do it that way. The improper way is to just complain about it and feel like you have all the answers. I. It, it still amazes me how many times you, you hear people talk and they talk about this problem that they're having and they say that I've, that I've tried this so many times. Well, obviously that hasn't worked. Have you tried doing it the way that God has told you to do it? So building relationship with each other. And then one thing that is intrinsic to all of mankind is a, a desire to have a purpose. Now, I can't say what your individual purposes are because each individual has a different purpose. Each individual has a different place in the kingdom of God. Each individual has a different talent. Each individual has a different specialty. Each individual is made uniquely in a way that they will serve God's kingdom in a unique way different from their counterpart. However, what I can say is that each and every one of us, each and every person ever created, believer and non-believer alike, have been called to stewardship. So if you're looking for a purpose and you're looking for a foundation, you're looking for a place to start, the first place that you can start is you can start with being a good steward. You can look at your life, you can look at the, the, the community around you, you can look at all of the things that you are surrounded by, and you can decide I am going to take care of this the way that God would want me to. I am going to tend to this the way that God wants me to. I am going to be a good steward. See, if we do those three things, we fulfill those, 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 those needs that we have, those needs that are deep down. We have that relationship with something greater than us, which is God. Every person, believer and non-believer alike, even if they say that they are an atheist and they are not, that, that they don't believe in nothing, it is way harder to believe in nothing than it is to believe in the true God. So they believe in something. It's just not 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 truth. So um, so they believe in something. They cannot say that they believe in nothing. And if they believe in nothing, then they shouldn't have an opinion. If they say that they believe in nothing and they share an opinion with you, say, well, that opinion is not valid because you don't believe in anything. You said you were an atheist. So we have that confirmation that there's something greater through that relationship with Jesus Christ. Through that relationship with God, we understand that there is something greater than us. We understand that there is something that is always going to be there through eternity. And we also have that goal of coming and being in God's presence at the time of eternity, at the time of our, our, our new beginning. We have that desire to be with God. And when I say new beginning, I'm talking about here on earth. Our new beginning, when we give ourselves to the Lord, we have that new beginning. So then the second thing is, we all want friends, we all want relationship, and we all want confirmation on the things that we're doing. That confirmation will come from God, and that confirmation will come from the body of Christ. So establish those relationships with other people. Let other people help hold us accountable. Let other people guide us with their wisdom. Let other people help us through the situations that we have. But also, don't forget to return that favor, because that's another part of your purpose that will be fulfilled, to be good in relationship with people. And then lastly, lastly is stewardship. Purpose. Part of your purpose, when you feel like you're worthless, when you feel like there's no reason for you to be around, maybe that reason is, is for no, nothing else but to be helpful to someone else, to be kind to someone, to be there in the time of someone's need, to help with, with the, the gifts that God has given us, to be the steward that God called us to be. And then lastly, what I want everyone to remember, when we wake up in the morning and we look in the mirror, 
whether we like what we see or we don't like what we see. When God created us, he said it was very good. So you may not be where you want to be right now. You may not be where you should be right now. But you can move forward. And you can move towards that good. Because when God created you, you were good. And that goodness does not go away as long as you have relationship with God. That goodness will remain in you. It's just a matter of digging away all the, 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 the dirt and the grime that we have surrounded our hearts and our souls with and being that good creation that God has made us. So I pray for each and every one of y'all and I pray for myself that we continue to, to be the, the, in relationship with God the way that we should be, be in relationship with man the way that we should be, and be stewards of the gifts that he has given us. Glorify him through our lives by doing these things. Glorify him in our lives by doing what we're supposed to do. And it's amazing. It's amazing the gifts that he will bestow upon you. I pray that each and every one of y'all understand the love, the care, the effort, the thought that God put into creating you. Look at how you work. Look at how your body works. Look at how your cardiovascular system works. Look at look at how your 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 eyes and your hands and and your feet and uh, and your bum knee and all that. Look at how everything works. God took the time and the effort to make you what you are. So know that he loves you. You don't spend that much time and you don't spend that much effort in creating something unless you truly love it. So that's what it boils down to, is the love of God. The love of God is what our happiness is centered in. Love God. Love your neighbor. Be good stewards. Be glorifiers. Be well. As Bobby McFerrin said, don't worry, be happy. Y'all dig? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. And Lord, I thank you for each and every individual that has seen this, that is watching this, or that may watch this, Lord. Lord, man, it's so easy to get caught up in all this stuff, all this garbage, all the all the downs, all the, all the, the boo-hoo moments of our lives, Lord. But... You created us for so many better things, Lord. Lord, let us see past those things. Let us see that the things that we are going through are simply steps to the place that you want us to be, Lord. Allow us to do the things that you want us to do, Lord. Allow us to be obedient. Allow us to follow your direction and allow us to love the way that we're supposed to love, Lord. Allow us to receive you as you desire and allow us to receive each other as you have designed us to receive. Lord, allow us to take, take care of the things that you've given us, Lord. I pray that we see the value that we have, not just through our eyes, but allow us to see that value through your eyes, Lord. Lord, you care about each and every one of us individually. You cared enough to make us who we are. You cared enough to make us unique. And you cared enough to give us each divine purpose. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for making us valuable. We thank you for making us important. We thank you for making us useful. And we thank you for making us purposeful. Lord, through you, we will be successful in the things that you put before us, Lord. Though the task is daunting and the world seems crazy, you are a constant. Let us establish ourselves in what is constant and move forward in your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Are there any questions, comments, concerns?
Any praise reports? Nothing? All right. Well, if we can get an amen, we'll call it a night. Remember, no Bible study on Wednesday. We are uh, we will be celebrating Sadie's adoptive birthday. Uh, we got uh, we got Graham's coming in town from Knoxville. My mom, and it's her birthday tomorrow. So wish her a happy birthday. She's uh, 21, and uh, I love y'all. God bless y'all, and remember how important you are—not just to me, but to God.